If there are two important supplements that everyone should consider supplementing are these two, vitamin D3 and omega-3. They are crucial for your well-being, immune system, heart health and brain health. But the biggest mistake that most people make is that they don't test their vitamin D3 and omega-3 levels in their body. And without testing, you have no idea if you're taking too much, too little or just the right dosage of these two supplements. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Greg and I'm a certified brain health professional. If biohacking, nootropics and optimizing brain performance interest you, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Now, why would you spend hundreds or thousands of dollars per year for the supplements if you don't know if they're beneficial or even harmful? That doesn't make any sense. So instead of playing the Russian roulette with the supplements, I suggest you test your vitamin D3 and omega-3 levels at least once a year so you can adjust your daily dosage to a level that will provide the most benefits. But how can you test those levels and what should you know about the tests before you take them? Well, I've decided to take vitamin D3 and omega-3 tests from Omega Quant and here is what happened. Now, I know there are many providers of such home tests, but I finally decided to use Omega Quant because they're one of the few companies that actually ship their tests across Europe. Now, of course, you can order any other high quality tests online if you prefer. By the way, guys, do you currently supplement vitamin D3 and omega-3? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, before I show you what to expect from the tests and my actual results, let me tell you why is it so important to test vitamin D3 and omega-3 levels in the first place. Now, there are three crucial reasons for that. The first one is obviously if you take too low dosages, you may suffer from deficiency. Now, if you're deficient in vitamin D3, you may experience a whole range of health issues like heart disease and high blood pressure, poor immune system and regular infections, diabetes, certain types of cancer, depression and even multiple sclerosis. Now, of course, you can increase your D3 levels by exposing yourself to the sun from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. But how often do you actually go outside almost completely naked during the week? And what do you do when it's raining, during winter, etc.? Well, chances are you don't get enough vitamin D3 and that's where supplementation becomes a logical solution. Now, on the other hand, if you're deficient in omega-3, you may experience severe issues with fatigue, memory, depression, mood swings, poor circulation and brain-related problems. Now, obviously, you can eat fish, but as you probably know, it's really hard finding fish that is not contaminated with microplastics and other unwanted pollutants. Hey fish, do you contain any microplastics? What? You do? Well, then I should avoid you, right? Now, the second reason to test those crucial nutrients is this. If you take too much of vitamin D3, for example, calcium can build up in your system, which can lead to all kinds of health issues, such as formation of calcium stones. You may also have issues with nausea, vomiting, frequent urination, bone pain, kidney problems, and much more. Similarly, too much of omega-3 can lead to high blood sugar and increased risk of bleeding. And the third reason why it is so important to take the right dosages of supplements is because you don't want to overspend on supplements if it's not necessary, do you? Well, if you do, I'll post some affiliate links to my favorite supplements below, so please keep on buying them every single month. So I've decided to test my omega-3 and vitamin D3 levels to check if my daily intake of those two crucial nutrients is optimal or not. Now, just before I share the results with you, let's check what are the optimal levels of D3 and omega-3. Now, based on the opinion of many different health experts, the optimal levels of D3 are between 30 to 50 nanograms per milliliter. Now, during my last test, when I wasn't regularly supplementing vitamins D3, my levels were around 26.3, which was slightly too low. Now, when it comes to omega-3, there are a couple of things you can check. First is the ratio between the anti-inflammatory omega-3 and the pro-inflammatory omega-6. And the optimal ratio is between 1 to 1 to 1 to 5. The second thing is to analyze omega-3 index, which is the measure of EPA and DHA in your red blood cell membranes. Now, research shows that the optimal level is around 8 to 12 percent. And lastly, there's the trans fat index, which should be below 1 percent if you care about your health. All right, let's check out the results first and then I'll try to analyze them and explain why did I get such results and how could I improve them. So first, let's check out my vitamin D3 levels. They are 40.2 nanograms per milliliter, which is basically the optimal dosage it really doesn't get any better. So that's a really good thing and I'm really happy about it. 
Now let's check out the omega-3 levels and trans fat index. First, the trans fat index is 0.38, which is perfect. Again, it doesn't get any better than this. Then my omega-3 index is 5.55%, which is close to 8%, but not quite there yet. Now this index checks the proportion of EPA and DHA of all the fatty acids in the red blood cell membranes. Then let's check out the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3. Now in my case, it is 6.7 to 1, and the optimal ratio is 1 to 1 to 5 to 1. So I'm kind of close to optimal, but not quite there yet. And the final thing to check is AA levels versus EPA levels. And the ratio in my case is quite bad. It is 29 to 1, which is far from the optimal 2.5 to 1 to 11 to 1. Now, why did I get such results and how can I improve them? First, my vitamin D3 levels are optimal. And the reason for that is that I take 4,000 international units of vitamin D3 about five times per week during winter. And I take about half the dosage. So about 2,000 international units uh, almost every single day during summer. Now, my trans fat index is amazing because, well, I very rarely consume any trans fat. Now, if you wanna have low trans fat index, well, avoid foods like cakes, cookies, frozen pizzas, burgers, margarine, etc. Now, my omega-3 index is not optimal. And the reason for that is that for the last month before I took this test, I only took about one gram of omega-3 every second day. So only about half the usually daily dosage. Now, I want to see if this is enough, but obviously it really isn't. And that's also the reason for a suboptimal ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 and AA versus EPA. As a matter of fact, I need to increase my EPA levels. By the way, guys, do you wanna know how well does your brain work? Go for our free brain assessment, link in the description below and get your brain performance score. So what's the next step? Well, firstly, I recommend testing your D3 and omega-3 levels at least once to twice a year. Now, if you decide to use the omega quant test, there are different options available. I took the classical vitamin D3 test, which cost around $40, and then the complete omega-3 index, which costs around $80. Of course, you can just take the basic omega-3 test, which only costs around $50. Now, according to Omega Quant, it is optimal to repeat the test every three to four months. But honestly, if you take the test at least once a year, it's of course better than nothing. The more often, the better for you. Then, once you get the results, go on omegaquant.com and check for their calculator. There's gonna be a link below, by the way. In the calculator, you put in your results and you'll get an optimal daily dosage of omega-3 and vitamin D3. Then, of course, increase or decrease your daily intake to get the best results. Now, if you seriously want to boost your brain performance, then you should consider supplementing a few other crucial nutrients. Watch my next video up here to check them out. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Stay well.